Okay, it's time for some piano. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to be back here on YouTube after a nice break in the summer. So um, I, it's we've got a lot of good things planned for today. Um, we're gonna be learning about a new way to use our pedal. So it's gonna be quite exciting, so stay tuned, okay? Um, before we get started, if you don't mind liking and sharing this video, that helps me reach more piano learners across the globe that are looking for a piano teacher like me. Now, if you're watching this video, you already know what kind of piano teacher I am. I'm a fun, spunky, really exciting piano teacher that keeps you engaged. So if that is something that you think your friends would enjoy, go ahead and share. <laughs> the next thing, of course, is don't want, um, subscribe, right? <laughs> it says right there. Subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Um, that way you get those notifications if you touch the little bell um, of all of my new piano lessons that are coming up, okay? All right, go ahead and do that. Next, um, we operate on a Discord server. So this is great because this is where my piano learning community lives. Um, this is where you get feedback on your piano learning progress. You're separated out into your classes and you get to know some of your uh, fellow piano learners and it's a very super awesome supportive community. All right. And then finally, I am on Patreon. So this has been such an amazing journey, being able to bring you piano lessons on YouTube on like, what, the past 19 months now? <laughs> it's been a long time. So if you've been following along and you haven't joined as a patron yet, I would highly encourage you to do so. I've got different tiers from $5 a month up to $20 a month um, to support me and bringing you all of these amazing lessons, okay? Um, I'd love to see your name on my patrons list soon, okay? Thanks so much. All right, let's get started. All right, pull your book out, everybody, okay? Where we left off last semester, yeah, I think it was in the spring, <laughs> um, we were working on The Stranger on page 129, okay? And on 129, we had some really interesting things. We learned about the key of A minor. We learned the difference between the harmonic minor scale, the natural minor scale, and the melodic minor scale. It's kind of a lot to deal with. Um, if you need a good review, definitely take a look at page 128 and review those scales, okay? Now on page 129, we had our song, The Stranger, okay? It included um, an A minor chord progression within the song itself. Luckily, the song is a nice slow song, so as we play through it today, it's not gonna be too crazy, all right? Let's give it a try. It has been a little while since I've played it, so <laughs> bear with me if I make some mistakes. Hey, it happens, I'm only human. <laughs> Let's give it a try. All right, so we're here in our piano view. We've got A minor, so we've got to make sure we're in our position correctly here. Our right hand has got, uh, we've got our three on C above middle C, and our pinky on E, and then we've got our left hand in this A below middle C, okay? I'm going to count off, and we're going to see how this goes, all right? One, two, ready, play. Thank you. 
goodness that was fun how did you do on that I know the roadmap is a little bit crazy right so if you haven't taken a look at the stranger in a while it's gonna be like feeling like where the heck are we going <laughs> there's so many repeats and jumps and da couple like there's lots of stuff going on there so make sure that before you sit down to play this one and record it for me to view on discord you take the time to review the roadmap of this song okay it sounds great, and I think you're going to love playing it. Uh, I can't wait to see how you do, okay? So, very nice. <laughs> okay, so on to our next page here. On page 130, we have our new type of pedal we're going to be playing, okay? Now, we're still going to be using the damper pedal, the furthest pedal to the right on your piano, or if you're using a digital piano, it's the pedal that's plugged into the piano, the one furthest to the right, okay? But there's a different notation this time, okay? Whereas before we had that uh, line going across the music and then up at the very end, it's a little different this time because what they're notating is you're gonna have that line going across, but then there's like this little carrot or a little triangle or the top of a pyramid in the middle of that line somewhere, and then it keeps going. Basically what they're telling you is that if you see that notation, the notes that are written above that notation, you're going to lift your foot as if you were lifting those fingers on the keyboard and then immediately put it back down as you're moving on to the next phrase, okay? It's a little bit funny to, to speak about it verbally, so let me demonstrate it for you, okay? Listen extra carefully so we can hear that overlapping pedal, okay? Here we go. I'm going to play these practice lines here at the middle of page 130. I'm going to start with my left hand, okay? My left hand is beginning in an A minor position, and you'll hear my pedal, here it is, you hear it? <laughs> I'm going to depress it or press it down when I put my fingers down for that chord, but then when I'm about to change my chord, I will emulate the same motion in my hand, in my foot, and up, lift it and then press it immediately back down. It's kind of like a, a half lift. You just want to clear out the notes from the chord before it so that it's not sounding very muddy, okay? So this is what it sounds like. lifting it completely. Yeah. Let's repeat that line so you can hear it one more time. So as you're pressing the chord down, that's when you're clearing out the sound from before uh, with your foot, okay? And that way you've caught the new notes to hold those and letting go of those old notes from before, okay? Very nice. So I would suggest that practice uh, line there and the one below it, do that quite a bit. So you can really see if you're clearing out that pedal quick enough to have it sound how it needs to sound, okay? If you find that those notes from the chord before it are still kind of lingering on, we're not quite lifting our foot high enough to clear it out, or we're lifting it um, too late, right? So remember, as you're pressing that chord, that's when you're lifting the pedal slightly to clear it out and then putting it back down, okay? 
All right. Now, we've got a new song here called Green Sleeves, and I love this song. It's a very, very um, well-known song um, that, uh, you know, you kind of hear it sometimes um, in like the 1960s. You, you hear this song being played quite a bit. And then also, it's sort of a medieval type of song um, with those uh, minstrels singing their uh, songs to their loved ones in, in the town square or something, right? So that's kind of cool. Um, Green Sleeves is also sort of the basis for a Christmas song, um, although it does remove the sharp in the seventh tone here. Um, it's called What Child Is This? So you may recognize it, all right? Now, looking here at the beginning of Green Sleeves, we do have a little hint. We have a notation written here in the pink box. It says this is the key of A minor, okay? So that's why you don't see any sharps or flats in the key signature, okay? I know it's A minor because we check the beginning and the very end and we play those notes and we see in our ear if it sounds minor or sad or if it sounds happier, right? So let's give that a try so we can figure that out. I'm looking here at the very beginning. I see a right hand finger one, and it is on an A, right? And then I have my left hand, and I see that the very first triad is A, C, E. So listen carefully. Yeah, kind of sounds sad, right? Now let's double check the final chord of the whole song, okay? all the way over here. So looking over here, I see in the treble clef, we have an E on the bottom and an A on top. And the left hand, we've got an A and a C. So let's play that. Yeah, sounds like sad music, right? An A minor song, all right? So in case you do a, a attempt or you see a song that doesn't have that little hint of a box there telling you the key, that's probably the quickest way to figure out what key you're in, is to play the beginning um, opening chords and then the final chord of the whole song. And then that gives you a pretty good idea. All right. I also see we have a new dynamic sign this time, okay? So you're fully aware of a piano, right? Nice and softly playing. You also know a mezzo forte, right? Mezzo forte is like moderately loud. Well, in this case, we have something in between those two called a mezzo piano, okay? And mezzo piano is just that. It's medium soft, so it'll be softer than a mezzo forte, but slightly louder than a regular piano, okay? So think of it as like you're delicately playing, but you feel like you've got, um, you know where you're going, right? You've got this feeling behind it, so. Looking at green sleeves, I'll switch to piano view. We're gonna go over the right hand only of this song all the way through from beginning to end, okay? It is a nice and slow song, so follow along with your own music and your right hand at the piano. All right, very cool. All right, so starting here at the very beginning, our right hand is on that finger one on A above middle C, okay? That A has our thumb, but look at the very next note. It says finger two, but it, it's another space note, so I know automatically this is a third, okay? So I have my hand set like this. All right, so let's get started. I'll say note names as we play, okay? But I'm not gonna say all of them. <laughs> all right, here we go. One, two, three, ready, go. A, C. to thumb on A. A, C, B, G, C, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, then we have a fourth E and A, two, three, and the same. 
Good, continuing on, finger four on a high G. G, two, three. G, two, F sharp, E, D, switch to finger three. B, G, hold, A, B, C, two, A, A, B, 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 back up to high G. G, two, to finger three on D. B, G. G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, fourth, E and A. Fourth, E and A. Awesome. Hey, that was really nice. How did that feel? I know there's a lot of really interesting um, fingering changes in there, okay? You see the fingers um, written at um, page two, line three, the third measure. You see that D right there. There's like a pink flowery looking asterisk right there. That says one dash three. So that means you are going to play that D first with the finger one, but then as you're holding it, you'll put your three on there. So that way you're set up for the next notes. Let me switch to piano so you can see that specifically, okay? I'm looking here at page two. This is uh, 131, line three, measure three, okay? I've got my finger one here on the D. One, two, I'm switching to finger three. B, G. You see how I did that? Okay, let's do it again. One, two, switch. B, G. All right, I hope that helped you, okay? That does happen again on the very final line of the entire song. There's your D again. Finger one, switch to three. All right. So there you go, those um, funny finger changes, ha they have a purpose. It's because you have to be able to move your fingers in a way that opens up the bottom part of that scale so you can play the rest of the song. If you did not move your finger um, there from a finger one to a finger three, you wouldn't have enough fingers to finish out the phrase. So that's why they tell you to do it, okay? So spend some time working on that finger change. It's okay if it's not like totally perfect the first time. It's not supposed to be. These are not like easy songs they're getting progressively harder. I mean, we're here at less than 44. Whoosh, 44, that's crazy. You're doing amazing. So give yourself that time. Give yourself some space and grace to be able to figure it out, okay? You're doing great. All right, now with that, let's take a look at the left hand now, okay? Because the left hand is primarily playing block chords, we will be practicing it with the pedal. Okay, because most of the chord changes will um, kickstart that overlapping pedal. Okay, you'll notice every time we change our chord, there it is, there's the carrot, right? It's sticking up right there. There's another one. There's another one at the top of 131, right? Look at that, almost every single time, as long as it doesn't have a tie or the notes don't change, then there isn't one. But I see these little carrots everywhere. It's pretty cool. Let me circle them all. Yeah, we got a bunch of them. Excellent. So if you've gone through and circled all your overlapping petal carrots, <laughs> uh, then I think that's a good visual reminder to lift that foot as long as you're, uh, when you change that chord, okay? Let's switch to piano view and learn that left hand, okay? All right. Excellent. So looking here, we've got a minor, right? And I see the pedal marking right there. So I have my right foot already ready on my damper pedal. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to count off. One, two, three, ready, and play. A minor, two, three, tie, two, three, G lift pedal, one, three, one, two, three, down to F, two, three, 
top of 131, two, three, down to E major with a G sharp, two, three, one, two, rest, A minor, two, three, hold, two, three, G lift the foot, two, three, one, two, three, down to E major, two, three, A and C, two, three, A and C, two, three. Now let's continue. Pinky on G, we have C and E on top. One, two, three, hold, two, three, down to a G major, overlap, two, three, one, two, three, then to F, two, three, and tie, two, Three, now E major, two, three, and tie, two, rest, back up to the G, C, E, two, three, hold, two, three, then the G major, lift your foot, two, three, hold, two, three, overlap, F, two, three, E major, two, three, and A and C, two, three, and A and C. Very good. All right, that was nice. Now with that, you'll notice the overlapping pedal can kind of sneak up on you, okay? So if we're breaking down that overlapping pedal even more slowly to like mini steps, this is what happens when you have that overlapping pedal. You're holding a, a chord from the measure before, all right? Your foot's already down with the pedal. I want you to lift that hand and then when you move on to the new chord, you play it, and then lift your foot and clear it out, all right? Let's do that again, nice and slowly, okay? We're going to hold the chord from before, and I have my pedal down. Lift your hand, change the chord and press it, and then quickly lift your foot and clear out the sound from before. Try it again. Two, three, hold, two, Three, move your hand, play, lift your foot, two, three, hold, two, rest, okay? Take it slow, okay? If you can break it down into those mini steps, it will be easier, okay? Um, I think coordination-wise, that's one of the more difficult things to learn with overlapping pedal in particular. Um, making sure the hand as well as the foot are coordinated in the correct order will make sure that we're not holding any extra notes from the chord before it or we're not clearing it out too quickly and having it be like an actual lift of the foot and no connecting sound okay so that's something to keep in mind all right now let's try this hands together okay if you're not ready to do hands together yet that's okay I want you to take your pencil and I want you to follow along in the music as I play it, okay? Circle any tricky spots that you can find or come up with and make sure that you're fully aware of everything that's happening, okay? All right, turn on those listening ears. Let's do it together, okay? All right. All right, I'm getting into my position. A minor for green sleeves. Here we go. One two, three, ready, play.
good. Oh man, it's so pretty. Okay, so give yourself some time to really learn this one properly, okay? I have spaced out our adult lessons at this point to every two weeks because the songs are getting more difficult, okay? We need the extra time to be able to really, really focus and get in there and learn things the proper way, okay? If you find yourself having trouble, that's what Discord is for, okay? Record yourself playing a tricky spot, take a photo of, of a tricky fingering or anything like that. Post it in your class channel so I can see it. You can ask me anytime for questions or help or anything like that, okay? That's what Discord is for. So I'd, we'd love to see you on there, okay? All right, quick reminder, I am on Patreon, okay? I love doing this. This is like so fun and who knew that 18 months ago, I would be turning into a YouTube piano teacher. <laughs> but thanks to your help and to your support, it's it's happening, you know, and I'm making this work. Uh, but I am only sustained by your donation. So pledge on, pledge on Patreon today. Just pick something that works for you. Um, there's no pressure. Um, I just, I want to see your name on that list. All right. Uh, thanks so much. And then a final reminder, of course, subscribe. That's the easiest thing you can do. If you enjoy my teaching style, if you like following along in these books, I mean, that's the easiest thing you can do. All right, thanks so much for doing that. And we're going to end, as we always do with our lessons, with a music quote, okay? And today's music quote is pretty good. It comes from the American musician and songwriter, Jimi Hendrix, and this is what he says. Music doesn't lie. If there is something to be changed in this world, then it can only happen through music. You know what, I agree with that. Uh, music is just one of those things that transcends political parties, uh, races, um, geographical areas, ages. Um, music just hits you differently, uh, especially when you're trying to convey a super important message. So. I really agree with Mr. Hendricks here. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that quote. Thanks so much for tuning in today for our lesson. And I can't wait to see you on Discord. And I'll see you next time. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.